as you can see here, uh, we do have our learning unit number three, guys. Uh, just speak, uh, remember, don't forget to submit the ice test. They are very helpful, especially to us, the qualifying uh, for exams. Okay, so make sure that you do those uh, assessments and they will be helping us a lot. Uh, as you can see here, guys, I just want to introduce VET today. I know I gave you the video, but still I'm going to go through it just for the sake of summarizing what we have. And we are going to take some few calculations, you know, just a, a, as a foundation phase. So we are going to go through the VET. Any question, guys, before we continue with our lesson? Okay, let me just explain a bit. Uh, the, the, what we're going to do here is going to be the basic uh, explanation around VAT. You'll see as you progress with accounting, guys, uh, when it comes to VAT, uh, for a business to, to qualify to, uh, to supply goods and services where the VAT will be charged, uh, according to SARS, they do explain that uh, for you to qualify to be a vendor, remember a vendor, according to SARS, uh, is someone who is registered, uh, who is uh, including VET when he sells those goods and services. Okay. So a vendor is someone who is registered for VET. Okay. So at the end of the day, as a vendor, you need to know whether you automatically qualify or you voluntarily uh, wants to register and again the act tries to explain what is an enterprise okay so according to the act an enterprise is any enterprise or activity carried on a continuous or a regular basis uh, as long as it is in south africa uh, by any person it can also be by uh, by the people in a partnership whereby goods and services are supplied for a payment or for a price, whether it's a profit organization or not. Okay. So it means uh, when you are running a business, again, you need to know if you qualify to register for VET. And sometimes you can volunteer to register for, for VET. Even if you can check in your book, guys, you'll find the theory where they, told, they tell you about the qualification for registering so as long as you are making the revenues or the supply a value of 1 million at least 1 million from 1 million upwards it means automatically you need to go and register for vet so if you don't go and register for vet it means sars can end up penalizing you so you need to check if you add all your supplies of taxable uh, taxable supplies when uh, let's say for the whole year you get one million it means you automatically qualify to register for vet but if you've got one million it is not compulsory for you you can decide whether you want you want to register for vet or not okay so again please make sure that you go through the theory for more information in your book okay now i just want to focus on the slides as you can see here as you know value added tax means vet Remember, before it used to be 10%. Uh, it used to be called GST uh, in those days. Uh, they used to call it GST. Uh, uh, it stood for general sales tax. So it was 10%, and thereafter it was called VAT when it was 14%. It has been 14% for some time. And as you know, recently, you remember, I think it's the previous year, they increased VAT to 15%. Okay, so currently our calculation will have 15%, not 14%. Okay, remember, as a business, you are involved in buying and selling. That's a fact. For you to have the stock or the trading inventory that you're going to sell to the customers, you need to go and buy from the suppliers and thereafter you sell to the customers. Okay, so when you go 
to suppliers and buy they will charge you vet okay and that vet is called input vet meaning uh, you can maybe uh, let me just say associate these input vet with the buying part so when you go and buy you will be normally charged what uh, the input vet okay i'm just trying to give you more info so in other words the input vet is paid by the business when they go and buy stock to resell to the customers okay remember we don't buy that stock to consume that particular stock we buy the stock to resell when we resell again we as a business we need to charge vet so that vet is paid by the customers so again here i can say i associate the input together with the selling part okay i'm just saying in a nutshell you'll see uh, i'm just trying to give you the basic so who pays input vet you as the business when you go and buy who pays the output vet you the uh, the customer the customer pays selling price like for example if you go to the canteen uh, our canteen at varsity college when you buy some of the items are including vet so that vet uh, is remember uh, the canteen charged you that vet you as the customer or the consumer you paid for that vet and remember that vet does not belong to you the business so when the let's say when the canteen for example uh, charge you vet on what you bought so this money belongs to sars so output belongs to sars that's why we call output is going to be a liability let me be specific it's going to be a current liability and we call it a current liability is because the money that has been collected by you as the business that money does not belong to you you will go and pay to sars that's why i said payable to sars are we together so it means you owe sars so the output will always belong to sars that's why we say it's a current liability unlike the input the input is claimable from sars meaning we will classify the input as the current asset okay so i'm just trying to elaborate on this one so the input will be current asset why we do we say it's current asset because as we said before as we said it is claimable it is refundable okay so claimable means is refundable so this is very much important it is refundable so in other ways it is clay uh, refundable uh, let me just write something here so that you can see this is refundable by sars okay so as you can see here the output is payable to sars that's how we owe it so we collect money from the customer the money does not belong to us. That's how we say it's our liability. We owe SARS, okay? But the input vet, remember, we are going to go and claim it back from SARS. It is our asset because it belongs to us. Does this make sense, guys? Let me see the acknowledgement by saying yes, yes, yes. I expect to see uh, 15 yeses. Please just say yes, 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 to, so that I can understand that you understand at the same time. Thank you, Rulani. Offense, thank you very much. Don't pull a lot. Okay, so Chikosa, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chess Rick. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Keto, thank you, thank you. Dot thank you. Caitlin Nakane. Yes, yes, guys. Thank you very much. Remember, theory is very much important. Okay. Remember, one day you're going to be in business, uh, or maybe now you started because you can start now by helping other people with some books. Remember, it is very easy, guys, if you understand the basics. Because if you are helping small businesses, like what I'm doing at the moment, I do help some small businesses. So obviously, I need to make sure that their vet is up to date because we need to submit a, a monthly return. So they must be up to date. So we must know where to calculate vet. We must know where not to calculate the vet. But we still have to talk about those things after. Now, after after calculating VET, let's say 
we are in a business and we know that we calculated VAT. When the customers bought from us, we charged them VAT, and that VAT is called output, like I said. When we buy from the suppliers, we did calculate VAT, we call it input. So at the end of the month, when we submit our VAT returns, there's a form called VAT returns. So if you can go and Google on SARS website, you'll see that form has got a slot for output, it has got a slot for input, and it has got a uh, another space where it says refundable or payable. So in other words, that form will compare the input and the output depending on the results. It will tell you whether it's an uh, output is, is going to be claimable or payable. Like I said here, so when you take your output and you list your input, you either get VAT payable, meaning you either pay SARS or VAT claimable, or you either re, uh, claim the money from SARS, okay? If the output is more than the input, it means we owe SARS. But if the input is more than the output, it means SARS owes us. See now? So this is very much important, guys. Again, I'm going to refer you back to this slide by the time when we still uh, start calculating, okay? So uh, I think it's going to make sense, okay? So you can ask questions if you have, guys. Guys, let me advise you. Uh, I think they did uh, upload your assessments, your tests, and the exams. If I were you guys, I will start answering the questions which I think I can answer at the moment to avoid pressure at the end of the day. It's just my friendly advice. For example, let's say after that, you find that there's a question in the test or exam which you can answer which is based on VET. I will just go and calculate it. I'm safe. I don't have to worry anymore. And again, it's a, it's, it's a process of practicing for the future. So please make sure that if you have time, just do now. You know, one question a day, is, it's okay. One calculation a day, you save time, okay? Remember, you're not only doing accounting. I don't mind, uh, you can do them on Word or Excel, yes, I will appreciate if they can be typed. And others sometimes prefer to write it down, guys. When you write it down and you need to scan it, but please make sure that it's visible enough because sometimes if it's, it's, it's typed, it's not typed, it's, it can be a mission for me to mark. But I'm telling you, if you can give yourself time to type it, Please, I will appreciate it. Yes, you can either use Word or Excel. And if you use Excel, obviously your additions and you know subtraction, subtraction are going to be easy for you. Can you see? Because the Excel will just add for you. Okay. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, before we switch over to the next? Okay. Let's look at, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to explain this because I think I, expl I just want, you know, I normally give extra, you know, just to put it in a different way, but it's the same thing as previous slide. So if you have got time, guys, just go through it. Uh, remember, in accounting, you will never say you have got enough information. I'm telling you, even tomorrow, you know, sometimes when I'm by myself here, bored, sometimes when I'm not with you guys, you know, sometimes I think of, okay, man, on that slide, maybe I've ca I can add this. Maybe I can add this. That's why sometimes I do change, like I don't change the slides, I just add more. But when I add more, I'm gonna tell you about that, okay? So so that you can go and check. But it's not like you, you if you don't look at my editions, you will fail, no. So I always try to come up with something better. Are you okay? And again, you will see guys, I'm just telling you in advance, you will see, uh, like I said, Mm, on that form where you, which you use to submit uh, to SARS, it has got a slot for input. You will see by the time when we start recording in the account, especially for VET, we will be opening an account called Input VET. And sometimes you open an account called uh, Output VET. Like I told you, Input VET is an asset. Remember, I said it's a current asset. So at the moment, you need to expect to record under which side. Who can tell me under which side of the input are we going to record? Like I said here, it's going to be on the credit side. Can you see now? On the debit side. Okay. But the VET output, because it's a liability, you expect to record it under the credit side. Okay. Again, this will make sense uh, by the time when we record. So after recording in those two accounts, there is an account where we are going to transfer. Remember I said on that form, uh, there's a slot for input and the slot for, what? for output. So they compare the input and the output to check whether we owe SARS or SARS owes us. 
So in our accounting books, we've got a specific account to compare the inputs and the output. That account is called VAT control account, as you can see here. VAT control account, okay? It has got a debit and a credit. And again, on the debit side, you're gonna see the input. And on the credit side, you're gonna see what? The output. So when we compare the two balances or the two sides, you will either get refundable or payable. But again, it's going to be easy when you physically see that particular account. Okay. So again, guys, you'll see it's going to be easy. I just wish I was seeing you face to face so that I can see how easy when I put it on the on the board. Okay. So, but don't worry. Sooner we're going to do that. Humbulani, you said uh, the business claims the vet, the amount will be debited in the general ledger that's perfect so it, you will see it will be on the debit side but if we have if we have to pay sars you will see that the balance will be on the credit side perfect you are, are correct humbulani no, correct correct okay it's very practical because that's what i'm saying you can even start helping someone even for free for now like what when i started my small uh, bookkeeping services you know i just started by helping friends and family you know friends and family don't even pay you so i didn't even worry because i wanted to have that exposure can you see now so you perfect yourself and thereafter you can start charging people and then you know life goes on so yeah so this is a very practical that's what i like about sars so i did uh, this uh, um, a taxation at an advanced level i did taxation at, a, at an honest level at a cta level so uh, I'm getting used to it because I talk about it every day. Okay, so let's continue, guys. If you don't have a question, remember it's just I'm trying to give you the basics, you know. Yeah. Now uh, you will see, especially with your assessments, uh, they ask more questions, especially the the practical questions. So here I'm just trying to show you that it's an in brief. I'm gonna show you with uh, some analysis, but for now it's just just to brief this thing. When we calculate VET, what they like in the exam or test, you need to ask yourself and they give you a figure before you can calculate VET. You must ask yourself, if they gave you the selling price, let's say you are selling, the selling price can either be without VET or with VET, meaning the amount given to you can either include VET already or maybe they still have to calculate VET on that amount. Okay, so there are different ways of calculating. So if they say, for example, let's say you have got a selling price or a purchase price. In other words, if you buy or if you sell, it doesn't matter. So um, can you see, I just said, is the selling price or purchase price including VAT? So if the answer is yes, and they want me to calculate VAT, meaning they want me to know how much VAT did they include in that amount. For example, let's say, for example, they gave you um, an amount of 500 and this that 500 is inclusive of vet okay so it means you need to calculate vet but you need to be careful so you're gonna say for example the amount is 500 you're gonna multiply it by what by 15 over remember there are different methods you can choose any method but for my students i prefer this method of fractions and please how much is 500 times 15 over 115 please help me use the calculator there. 500 times 15 over 115. Uh, thank you, 65. Uh, do you support Humbulani with 65? Let's see how we do that. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Offense. Thank you, Doria. Uh, can you see? This is very easy. So, you just have to be careful. So, that's what I'm saying. I'm just showing you the basic. Okay. But the challenge can be a situation where they give you VAT, but they ask you how much was the selling price before. So don't worry, I'm going to break down that for you. But I'm just talking about the common calculations that we're going to have. So can you see, you say 500 times 15 over 1 on 5. The minute you say 15 over 1 on 5, I know that the amount that you used to calculate was including what? VAT. Remember, it is including VAT. I said yes. Okay. But let's say, for example, they say the amount of 500 was not including VAT. They want you to calculate VAT. So you're going to say 500. Please help me with the calculator. Times a decimal, two decimals. Uh, you yeah, provide two decimals. Or if they don't say anything, you can also convert to the nearest range. Yes, often uh, two, uh, two decimals. OK. Or you can even convert to the nearest range. OK. So please calculate 500 times 15 for me. 
uh, divide by 100. How much do we get? Help me, please. Seventy-five. Thank you very much, Offense. You know, see the difference between calculating. For example, when you go to pick and pay or you go to Woolworths and then you go and buy something, you know, if you check the slip, there are other items which are taxable and others are not taxable. But if you want to know how much did they tax you, it means you must take the total of that slip. Let's say all of them were taxable. You must take the total of that slip and you multiply that total by 15 over 1 on 5 to know how much VAT did you pay. Because normally the slips are inclusive of VAT. Are you okay? So again, uh, this is how we calculate. Can I know if you understand everyone, please just acknowledge for me. I will appreciate that. Do you understand so far, guys? Thank you very much, Tess. Thank you, Doria. Thank you, Everyone, offense. Thank you very much, guys. Rulani, thank you. Uh, Jalin, thank you. Koketo. Simofatso Nombulelo. Thank you. I appreciate, guys. I hope you are following. Eh? I hope you even think of starting your own business now. The other thing that I want you to note, if the selling price or the purchase price that you have been given there is subject to trade discount, Remember, you must first deduct that discount before you can do these calculations. For example, if on this 500, we were given a discount of 10%, we were supposed to deduct that 10% from 500 before we could calculate the VAT. This is what I'm trying to say here. I hope everything makes sense. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, now let's move on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, we need to be careful. Uh, like I said, but when you progress with accounting, guys, uh, you will know that, you know, whatever we do, we need to check what does SAR say according to certain uh, 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 regulations, okay? So we have got different types of items. So when you are selling in your business, or if you are an accountant for a particular business or a bookkeeper, you need to familiarize yourself uh, with the items which are taxable or vetable and the items which are not taxable or vetable. But you cannot just know them. SARS, tell us, SARS tells us about which items to refer so as a bookkeeper or as a someone in business so if you don't know about something that is taxable or not you can just go to sarah's website and check whether it's taxable or not okay but for our uh, uh, lesson purposes we need to know this for example okay the first thing we have got items or products which are standard rated if we say an item is standard rated what do we mean we mean that particular item will be taxed or will be vetable at a rate of 15 percent like what we just did from the previous slide this means that we that 15 percent that we calculated it means that uh, that particular item is vetable is taxable these are some of the examples okay so i put these examples you know i've been i claim to be around i've been around i've been lecturing these modules for some time so these are some of the things that i've encountered when i was lecturing my previous student so i just said okay based on my previous accumulated experience let me just give them examples like this can you see now so it's a better chance that in the exam or test you'll find this example so just go and familiarize yourself why did i do that because there are too many items on sars website so we cannot expect you to know all the items so i just gave you the ones that are familiar when it comes to our syllabus as you can see here white bread uh, we've got delivery vehicles We've got trading in store. Can you see most of the items are, are taxable or vetable? Okay, so go and familiarize yourself with this. Okay, these are just examples water and electricity, telephone, doctor subscription to the medical council, stationery, cattle purchased by the restaurant for the use of primary business, short term loans, advertising, delivery vehicles. Does not okay, the delivery vehicle it means as long as not 
called a passenger vehicle as long as it's not called motor vehicle because according to sars there's a difference between motor uh, let's say motor car and a delivery vehicle there are two different things so vehicles are the ones that we use for the business specifically a motor car normally we have got um, uh, like the, the car that you use at home that is a motor car okay so we need to check those things at the end of the day again i gave you some examples let me go to the next page guys make sure that you go and learn this you don't have to go to sars website you can even look at my slides you know a man of my caliber you can trust him uh, he has been around so that's why sometimes i call myself non-current asset for varsity college yes uh, I, I praise myself like that so please make sure that you go through these slides are you okay ladies and gentlemen okay Okay, let me move on. Thanks, 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 Nakane. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's try. Remember that those were the standard rated items. Now we have got uh, the items called zero rated items, of which some people have got concern and say, okay, for example, here, zero rated means that item is taxable but at a rate of zero percent can you see it's like you you don't pay tax at all someone can say why don't you say these items are not taxable at all because it looks like that i'm telling you sars did this thing for a reason yes for example if you take something by zero percent you don't pay tax at all but sars remember i said for you to be able uh, for us to be able to know whether you qualify to register for VET or not. Remember I said we check the value of your supplies, the taxable supplies. Let me write it down. We check the values of the taxable supplies. Okay? And those taxable supplies, so if I add those values, let's say during the year you sold several times and you made uh, 1.2 million sales during the period. So as long as it's at least, at least meaning as from, at least 1 million. And let me write if I can see, guys. If it is at least 1 million, also oh, I'm missing zero here. Sorry, guys, it's a little bit skewed. Yeah, as long as you can see. As long as it is 1 million, guys, it means you qualify to register for VET. It's not optional it or not you must register for that but how will SARS determine or calculate whether you qualify to register for that what SARS will do they will take all the supplies which have been made from zero rated uh, okay from the standard rated standard items plus zero rated So when they add them together, for example, here I showed you. So when they add all the items which are falling under this and they realize that you reach 1 million, it means you automatically qualify for that. Can you see now? So this 0%, <coughs> sorry, sorry, 0%, zero percent, guys, is because they want to check whether you qualify or not. For you, it doesn't affect you that much. Okay. So any questions, guys, about this? Let me know if you understand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Yes. So again, these are examples. Uh, paraffin, for example, guys, you know, even though they're expensive, thank you very much. I appreciate, guys. These are examples of items which are not, uh, uh, they are taxed at a zero percent. For example, we've got uh, the paraffin, we've got uh, the sale of business uh, as a going concern. These are the examples, okay? Brown bread, you know that brown bread is not text, but a white bread is text. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Any question? Okay, I'm going to move to the next one.
Hey, someone is helping me with the cursor. Please, please uh, leave the cursor for now so that I cannot be confused. I think someone is helping me there. Two of them. I don't know where does the other one come. The other hand. Okay. Now, let's talk about the other items in business. Remember, we're running a business. We need to know which one is not text or not. So the other items are called. Uh, they are called. Uh, Exempt items, as you can see, uh, exempt items are those items which are not taxed at all. Okay, so if they are not taxed at all, we call them exempt. Can you see they look like zero rated? Because even under zero rated, we don't pay. But the exempt is not used to calculate and check whether someone qualifies or not. Can you see now? So that's why it helps us. So SARS only use the taxable supplies in the form of standard and the zero rated. So exempt because they are not taxable. They cannot take the supplies of exempt and add them together with those other items to check your qualification. No, they will make sure that they exclude exempt. As you can see, most of them are, let's say, essential services. For example, taxi industry in South Africa doesn't pay tax. They fall under what? Exempt rail transport for trajectory the interest on the draft so they are just examples according to SARS. the public transport can you see now sorry i wanted to say rail here it's not rain in it it's rail so like rail transport like uh, using a train there's no vet there for those who are operating a train there's no vet on those who are operating yes uh there's a question here if VED is not recorded properly by a business, what happens? Yes, if let's say, for example, uh, you even forget to charge. Like, remember, you need to be registered for VED before you can do that. Okay. Let's say you forget to charge your customer that output VED. SARS is going to claim that VED from you, unfortunately. So you must make sure that your books are on point. So they will check and say, okay, you sold to customers, but you need to collect VED from them. So you have to pay for that for those customers. So that's why you need to seek help when necessary, okay? You know, the, the bookkeepers are not that expensive. You can just ask them to help you, but this will help you again in the future because you are doing accounting. You will know what to do, are you okay? So these are the examples of exempt guys. Now, let's talk about the non-allowable guys, the non-allowable items. So these items, to be honest, so when you go, let's say, for example, you go and buy something and they charge you VAT as a business, they charge you VAT. So remember, I said that the VAT that is charged when you go and buy, let's say, stock, something like that, is claimable from SARS. So there are some items, even if you paid VAT on them, SARS won't allow you to claim back vet on on them yes you bought and you paid vet for that but sars denies you to claim that vet from them so you need to check what are those items it doesn't mean that if you don't go and claim vet you didn't pay vet yes you pay vet remember normally or usually when you paid vet you can go and claim it but these items even if you paid vet sars will say no 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 you cannot claim that vet especially the staff related items for example the staff refreshments can you see sars won't allow you for that uh, entertainment expenditures let's say sometimes you go and entertain let's say you are you entertain your, your your employees can you see now so those refreshments unfortunately you cannot claim that so these are some of the examples that you can find guys in our syllabus the staff staff room fridge for example white bread for staff lunches can you see the word staff Staff is for refreshments. Staff micro oven. Can you see now? Business subscription to the local club. Kettle for the office. Can you see now? It's used by the staff. Staff lunches. A double cab vehicle. Because the double cab, they say, is not a delivery vehicle. It's not a business vehicle. They say it's a motor car in a way. Can you see? If you've got a double cab, unfortunately, you cannot claim that uh, vet. The staff function. Can you see? Everything is around, revolves around the entertainment thing. Can you see now? So those items are non-allowable can i get an amen or a yes on these guys because i want to know whether you got this non-allowable items 
Thank you very much. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, guys. We are on the right track. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Remember, step by step we go. They normally say there is no hurry in South Africa. Eh? I think you agree with me. <laughs> in South Africa, there is no hurry. You agree with me. <laughs> so, especially with the service delivery. Okay, it was just a commercial break, guys. Okay. Uh, when you register for VET, there are two ways of accounting for VET. When I say accounting for VET, what do I mean? For calculating the VET. So because when you calculate VET, it means you need to record that VET. It's accounting. Okay? So the VET is accounted in two ways. You can either use the payment basis or the cash basis, or you can either use invoice basis. Let me first by, start by saying this. The payments, for you to use the payment basis, you need to apply for it. Okay? It's not used by anyone. So you need to apply for it. And again, you need to qualify for it. But the invoice basis, I can say all the businesses can use invoice basis. But if they want to use the payment basis, they need that special uh, application and SARS must allow them, must give them a consent to go and use the payment basis. But at the moment, I want us to know the difference between the two bases. If you use payment basis for accounting of VET, it means you can only account, you can only calculate VET when you receive cash, meaning we only need cash. If there is no cash, we don't calculate VET, we don't account for VET, okay? Meaning we don't record VET in the books of accounts. I can give you a practical example. Let's say you buy from me on credit. And I say you are going to pay me at the end of the month. Meaning I cannot account for that vet in my books now. I must wait till I receive cash from you. Are we together? Yes. So in other words, this basis may only be used by the sole traders and the partnerships. If you are 10 is less than 2.5 million per year, it can be used by the non-profit organizations, even the municipality. But if you as the individual you prefer to use this payment basis. You need to apply to SARS and SARS will just evaluate your reasons why you want to use it and they can grant you or maybe they can decide not to grant you. Does everyone understand the payment basis, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Thank you, Ngakane. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Fente, Chesrik. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Let me explain invoice basis. Uh, I know your books, you know, uh, explain it. They, they only explain the part for invoice, you know, because for me, you know, I claim to know better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I just give you more. You know, I like giving more, guys, so that, you know, that I always give you more so that when the future comes, yeah, you know, we are in a better position to accept the future with two hands, okay? Let me explain the invoice basis. The invoice basis says, we will account for VET looking at the area of invoice issued or the payment received. Let me explain this thing of invoice issued. When you say the invoice issued is like, for example, where we sold on credit, where there is credit. Where there is credit, in other words, if I issue an invoice, it means you owe me, meaning you are going to pay me maybe at the end of the month. Okay. The system says, whichever comes first between the invoice, let's say I give you invoice now, and then let's say I say you're going to pay me at the end of the month. So if I issue invoice and I give you the invoice now, I will calculate the VAT now and account. I'm not going to wait for the payment to be received. Can you see now? But if, let's say, for example, special circumstances, I receive the payment before I issue you, I give you the invoice, I will use that payment that I received to calculate the VAT on, and the invoice will still come thereafter. Does this make sense, guys? So whatever comes first between the invoice and payment will be, will take the precedent, okay? 
So, but normally, guys, we issue invoice first and we pay the later. So I'm just saying these are just special circumstances. Does this guys make sense? The invoice basis. Here you've got the choices. Whatever comes first, you use that. You don't have to wait for the payment received if you've got the invoice. Does that make sense? I guess silence means yes, we understand. Any question? Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Perfect. Perfect. By the way, don't forget that this session is recorded. So if you miss something, guys, at your own spare time at home, you know, having your own time, you can revisit this, you know. So we are lucky enough. That's why I say, uh, I think uh, when we go back to face to face, it's gonna be a little bit different because you know, face to face, we don't normally record a lot, you know. Uh, we don't record a lot. So, but yeah, I think uh, you need to make sure that you go and check the video once again, okay? Uh, just guys to show you some few calculations. Uh, you know, just to warm up a bit. Uh, let me analyze before we can continue. So before we can I can show you the calculations, because I want remember from the previous slides I did show you that when the amount is including VAT, we say fifteen over one and five. When the amount is excluding VAT, we say fifteen over hundred. So I don't want you to memorize that. I want you to know how to explain it. Even those, if let's say one day someone asks you, how did you get these figures? You know things like that. Or maybe one day you become a lecturer, you must know how to analyze that. So this is how I'm going to analyze for you guys. I'm just going to use the, 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 the selling price, for example. Let's say I'm going to use SP as the selling price. So SP is my selling price. I'm just showing you the formula. Right? So normally we add VET. I'm just trying to analyze for you guys so that you cannot be surprised. So I, let me just zoom a bit so that it can look bigger and then if you say selling price plus vet meaning you will get you will get the selling price including vets let me just say include it like this sorry guys i'm still writing so this is the formula i think i think you understand as a business woman or man so normally, what do you do? What's happening here with this? Okay. So what do you do normally? You say uh, selling price plus VAT. You get the selling price including VAT. Okay. So now when I analyze, I just want to show you how I got the one fifteen and the one. So normally when we sell here, the selling price. Let me just. We normally say it is hundred percent according to the percentage, and VAT is 15%. Sorry guys, if they are not in line, I'm sorry, as long as you can see that it's yeah. And then obviously the selling price including VAT is gonna be 115%. Let's see now. So can you see how did, where did I get my 15? Can you see now? So I'm gonna show you how we are going to calculate using this analysis, because this can be very useful, especially in the future there. So this is the, and I hope you can see from your side, guys. From my side, it's like it's catching. I don't know why it did catch me. Now, let this information. Okay. But I'm gonna challenge you a bit, guys, because this question that I put here has got the elements of account equation. It has got the elements of a um, uh, vet. But for now, I want us to focus on the vet. Okay. So let's say you bought goods on credit. And you bought them for 2500 and including VAT. Okay. Please think about it. Write it on the chat. How will I calculate the VAT that has been included already? Please write it on the chat. I'm waiting for you. So I want to know how much VAT is included. So remember, I gave you an example before. So I'm just going to wait for you. I want to know how much VAT is included in 2500 I want you to show me the calculation. Calculate for me on the chat.
I'm waiting, guys. Remember, no one is perfect. It's just a practice. Waiting. Are you still here with me? I need vet only. what I found. I don't know. Check if you agree with me. Any question? Maybe my calculation is wrong. I said 2,500 multiplied by 15 over 104 because I'm looking for vet. This is my vet. Double check whether my vet is correct or not. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about this. So remember, okay. Perfect. Remember, I told you that if VED is included, we say 15 over 1 and 4. It's okay, Tesrik. I understand. Yes. So this is how I showed you. But let, let's just use my analysis that I just put here so that maybe it can make sense. So let's say, for example, I didn't know uh, that uh, I have to do 15 over 1 and 5. So I can even do it here. I can ask myself here. So I'm looking. Okay, I'm going to check. They gave me 2,500. Right? And the 2,500 is including VET. So I was supposed to. Please, someone is drawing here. Please, 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 please. I was supposed to say in line here with selling price, including VET, I was supposed to put 2,500. Okay? This is the amount that they gave me. They said 2,500 including VET. So I'm going to put it in line with what is including VET. And they are asking me to calculate the VET. So in line with VET, I'll put a question mark. So obviously, I will analyze first. Uh, whatever they gave me, I put it where it is applicable. So because this 2.5 is including VET, I put it in line with this 115. I'm looking for VET. I put it question mark in line with what? 15%. So thereafter, I'm going to say, OK, what am I trying to calculate? So wherever I put question mark, I'm going to, I'm going to show the calculations here. Whatever I put question mark next to, I'm going to put it on top. I'm going to say thing divide by. So I will divide by where I put the amount. I put 2,500 uh, in line with the 115. I will divide by 115. Can you see how did I get my 115 here? Can you see how did I get 15 over 115 here? So I can always use this if I'm lost. As long as you put the question mark on the right line, and then you put the amount given to you on the right line. But I'm going to show you progress so you can use these guys if you are unsure which one to use but as long as you want to calculate vet where vet is included you will always use 15 over 1 and 5 it will never change okay now is it input or output tell me guys is the vet we just calculated input or output Input who who uh, agrees with uh, Keto? He said input. Please let, let me see the support or mean support. Let me know.
Okay, so far the support, yes, guys, I agree with you. Guys, if you don't if you don't understand, let me know. It's input, so it is input back. Okay. So it is input back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh yes, guys, I think yeah, we we are there. Okay. Before we continue, because we still have a few minutes, any question about what we just did here? Not bad. I'm telling you, if you can go and try your exams, ah, you are going to get 100. Okay, let's do this one. Let's see. Calculate for me. Tell me. How much is the VAT amount? And on this chat, show me how to calculate VAT on the chat, please. I want to see 19, 18 answers. Otherwise, detention, I promise you. I want to see 18 answers. How will I calculate the VAT for transition number two? I think now you know how to do it. I'm waiting. Who supports Keto, please? Okay, perfect. Ah, uh, guys, you're on fire. Eh, eh. Uh, I'm telling you, haters are complaining wherever they are. Perfect. Ah, uh, you don't, need Sylvester. You guys, you don't need me. You don't need me. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You don't need me, guys. You don't need me at all. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So let me just write it, guys. I know boring for you when I write. Let me write it for future so that when you refer back, comes 50 over 115. Some people are on fire. Haters are seeing flames. You know what I mean? Huh? You know, I told you guys, when I, I want to accelerate in life, I just think about the hater. You know what I do? I'm going to perform. And hey, I'm going to perform for them. I want them to see. Okay, guys. Input or output? input or output guys input input guys i'm disappointed are we buying what are we selling I will buy what I was selling. Change the answer quickly. Yes, change the answers. We are not buying. Remember, I said associate input with the buying. Here we are selling. Thank you very much. We are selling here. We are selling. So the answer is output. Get it now. I don't worry, guys. It's a process. Remember, it's a process. Step by step, we go. Step by step, we go. Don't worry. Now you know. Now you know. No one is born knowing accounting, I'm telling you. They will be lying to you. Okay, so guys, the last one, let's end with a bang, if you know what I mean. Do this for me. Tell me how much is the vet. Read and tell me how much is the vet. I see 42, I see 36. Let's see 42. Yes, let's see, let's see, let's see. I want uh, more answers, more answers. 42 is dominating. Let's see, 36. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, 42 is dominating. Let's see, yeah, yeah. 42, 36. Ah, there's a mixture here. 36, 36. Okay, let's see. 36, okay, let's see. 
nga kai bye k i c k two k c okay okay let's talk let's talk let's talk the magic word i underline for you the magic word that is excluded so i go with 42 please ask question those who are lost so it's 280 times shifting over 100 remember i told you that you need to check whether the vet is included or not can you see now so please those who didn't get it right let me know those who didn't get it right please let me know if you're okay now or do you need me to explain something let me know are you all okay those who didn't uh, were unable to get it right thank you Gakane. yes yeah you must check yeah you must check please make sure like you know in the exam they give you all these small things that they can change the whole picture so just check whether it's including or excluding i'm telling you you will be safe okay thank you thank you so is it input or output i see input 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 ah we're on fire ah we're on fire you know this is what i i mean uh this is we ended with a bang i'm telling you we, we we are on fire guys i can see the smoke okay so it is the input vet thank you very much guys for being good students uh, i appreciate my association with you we are going to win together i'm telling you thank you very much guys for sacrificing your time for me i feel most honored and then have a great day, guys. Enjoy your next lesson if you do have. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated.